Welcome everyone to the Best Damn Podcast. I am your host, John Keen. As always, I would like to thank you guys for joining me. Ask that you please add, follow, and check us out. www.thebestdampodcast.tv Follow me, Instagram, Facebook, Best Damn Podcast, Twitter, The Real Best Damn, and wherever you're watching from. Make sure to hit the like, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know what you think, and share this link. Get it out there, the way new people can find this, and make sure to subscribe. Click all on the notifications bell, and check out our astrology, our tarot videos, and all of our cool news and conspiracy, and uh, you know, if you would like to donate support to the channel or join the best damn fam get access to our uncensored shows our private content we do live uh, shows over on discord entire dropbox with hundreds of hours of shows that you will not find on the public platforms and not to mention it just helps me to be able to to do what i love and to, to bring this cool content so i want to say thank you to everyone for joining me tonight we have got quite the show uh, we're going to be looking at Possibly new mandates, right, that are coming around the corner. I'm sure you're incredibly surprised by that. Um, the World Health Organization is warning, you know, that there could be another pandemic, right, just around the corner. Uh, we have everybody captivated by Chinese spy balloons, but at the same time, there seems to be a lot more turmoil under the surface with China and Russia, Ukraine attacking Crimea, um, the escalation of nuclear war, and all of this just seems to coincide with a recent splurge in meteors, asteroids, uh, even Apophis, asteroid Apophis 99942 is back in the news, and that's just kind of the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the things we're going to be talking about tonight. This is going to be a really good one. We got so Solar storms coming in, um, Palestine, Ohio, toxic spills, trains derailing. It's like, wow, we're in this unprecedented time. Um, I, I think many people would say that this is a prophetical time, and we're going to actually look at some um, of the book of Revelations tonight and show you where I believe, especially when it comes to asteroid Apophis, that a lot of these things were predicted, you know, thousands of years ago. Um, you know, by prophets of old, and that biblical scripture and text kind of, you know, has set the stage for all of this. Is this us kind of, you know, is, is this a form of predictive programming and us really uh, manifesting a reality that we really don't want? Or, or was this like an early warning to, you know, something that we could have avoided? I guess, you know, we won't know till it all happens. Hindsight is twenty twenty, so... Let's go ahead and jump into it. I do want to thank everybody for joining me. Make sure you hit that like, guys. Hit that thumbs up if you're in the chat. It helps the algorithms and helps more people to find us. Uh, thank you to Zero Infinity Live, uh, Higher Mind, 1111, Stool Perger, DF, Tim Hamby. I appreciate all of you guys. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you. Hey, and just some news on the channel. Um, Best Damn Podcast 2 did get restored. YouTube removed my backup channel. I don't know if I told you guys that in the last video. I think I did. Uh, YouTube removed my backup channel. They took it down, but I appealed and I won the appeal. So they have restored the backup channel. So if you haven't subscribed to uh, BDP2, you can do that by going to youtube.com forward slash best damn podcast and the main channel is best damn podcast official. So let's jump it off here. Vaccine mandates could soon be rolling again. And hopefully I don't get my main channel knocked off just by even bringing this up. But that's that's the, you know, the craziness we're into, you know, in this age. And speaking of craziness, we're going to be looking at the Epstein documents that were just released. Um, not to mention uh, the story of the Committee of 300 doc as well. So I've got some cool documents, some cool shit to share with you guys tonight. So I hope you stick around. But vaccine mandates could be soon rolling again. After endless variants of and monkeypox, here is the next round of circus we are all waiting for. The largest ever outbreak of bird flu is spilling over into mammals, including otters and foxes in the UK, Europe, and the US. And you can see right here, let me show you the article. They are pushing this, right? This is being pushed. And you see them? Does this look familiar to you? 
right? Does this look familiar to you? Motherfuckers running around in a Tyvek and shit, right? <laughs> like, they're, like they're in the hazmat suit and all of that. This is, you know, COVID all over again. I can't say too much on these things, very obviously, because of, you know, community guidelines and, you know, the, the standards for, uh, you know, the public info, but I'm going to try to share as much as I can. So it says the World Health Organization warns that humans could be next. It is engaging manufacturers, quote, to make sure that if needed supplies of vaccines and antivirals will be available for global use. So if the World Health Organization is already engaging manufacturers, right, to make sure that the needed supplies are available for global use for this, then, I mean, one could kind of surmise that right around the corner we may be getting a visit from some type of variant of the bird flu. I do want to preface this show by saying I'm not a doctor. This is not medical advice, financial advice. Um, I'm not a psychiatrist, therapist, anything of any sort. I'm just a dude on YouTube and these are my opinions. Uh, alone and my views alone right take it with a grain of salt this is for entertainment only so let me make sure you guys have some sound before we get into the videos and all that good stuff here we go over the past few weeks there have been several reports of mammals including minks otters foxes and sea lions having been infected with h5n1 avian influenza H5N1 has spread widely in wild birds and pol poultry for 25 years, but the recent spillover to mammals needs to be monitored closely. For the moment, WHO assesses the risk to humans as low. Since H5N1 first emerged in 1996, we have only seen rare and non-sustained transmission of H5N1 to and between humans but we cannot assume that will remain the case and we must prepare for any change in the status quo as always people are advised not to touch or collect dead or sick wild animals <laughs> but to report them to the local authorities report it to the local authorities you fucking hillbillies don't be eating no roadkill or no shit like that tell your kids to get off the street and quit playing with dead animals like we all do that, you know, it's pretty fucking weird, but you already see this is what, when they're going in this direction, I start to get nervous. Um, not just because they've told us that, you know, the next cyber pandemic and all of this shit is just, you know, it's going to make COVID-19 look like some bullshit, right? It's going to be minuscule compared to what happens next. We've already seen in the past H1N1, all of these different variants of bird flu, swine flu, and all of that. And it's like now they are setting the stage. They're preparing people for the next global pandemic. And, you know, just like what we've seen with COVID, coronavirus, different variants, there were many different versions of that. Um, you know, the predecessors of what we see now, you know, SARS-CoV-2. Uh, and, and it wasn't anything serious until it was, right? And we were warned that one day we could possibly be dealing with that, and then one day we did. So it makes you wonder if this is a similar situation, if they are setting up the table for something like this to happen again. It says, I think you'll see this guy Tedros a bit more near in the future. The pandemic treaty will see him in charge of global lockdowns. And let's just take a look here. Right? You see bird flu spills over to the otters and foxes in the UK. And you guys remember this? This is a refresher. On May 22nd, the World Health Organization plans to strip 194 nations in the U.S. of sovereignty. This is a, the global pandemic treaty, right? And we'll just give you like a little kind of rundown of all of this. The decision will be made by a vote May 22nd to 28th at the World Health Organization Assembly. Two-thirds of the Senate does not have to vote for it. It's a rule change, but a devastating one. Um, the massive power grab that takes the nation's sovereign rights to determine its own health standards. And this would give global control over health 
worldwide which would help fulfill some of the goals of the world economic forums great reset this is something that has been pushed an inordinate amount of power to make decisions in sovereign countries as to how people live and how they deal with pandemics from lockdowns to mandates over treatments in an open letter on the world health organization's pandemic treaty the world council for health writes in part quote the proposed WHO agreement is unnecessary and is a threat to sovereignty and inalienable rights. It increases the World Health Organization's suffocating power to declare unjustified pandemics, impose dehumanizing lockdowns, and enforce expensive, unsafe, and ineffective treatments against the will of the people. It's the usual Marxist one-size-fits-all approach Everyone will be on the same page, and science will cater to global political whims. It will cost millions of dollars or more, and money will be laundered by them and their pickpockets, and the WHO appears to want to push the treaty through quickly without public participation and input. Quote, it is undemocratic, it is unconstitutional, and therefore... It makes the treaty invalid and unlawful, Mohammed says. She also made note of the many WHO health policy failures due to their conflicts of interest. It's much worse than we thought. The rule change includes very dangerous amendments, 13 of them. Um, and this reports that the amendments will not require approval by two three of the United States by two thirds United States Senate. It's not called a treaty; it's an amending of a treaty we are already a part of. So they're amending a global treaty that we are already a part of. You don't need votes for this or anything. It essentially wipes out 194 nations' sovereignty, says the investigative reporter. And let me just say. Um, with power like this, and when we see all of these emergency uh, powers expiring here in February of 2023, right? And this is happening in the United States uh, and probably many more countries around the world. It only kind of makes sense that we would see the next thing be rolled out now, you know? We've been warned by Klaus Schwab and, you know, all of the, the Davos guys and World Economic Forum cats that, you know, it'd be a cyber pandemic or cyber attack. And we see so many things right now pertaining to um, the electrification agenda, uh, the power grid. And, um, you know, there's such a threat of nuclear war. And all of this has kind of got our, our attention and nobody's really looking that they're kind of setting the table for the next scamdemic, the next thing to kind of declare emergency powers and to, you know, unlawfully and unconstitutionally uh, take control over the population like they did just a few short years ago. So it's pretty fucked up. <laughs> I think you guys would agree it's pretty fucked up and um, we'll probably be seeing this a lot sooner than later. Uh, Bill Gates said the next one will get attention this time. If you don't remember that video, here it is. Look at these two smiling faces. Evil. Sure. Uh, so we, you know, we'll have to prepare for the next one. That, you know, I'd say is, uh, will get attention this time. <laughs> Look at that fucking smile. I'm telling you, if people who call this guy a fucking philanthropist, and act like he does good things. It's like, have you ever seen this cocky, condescending little shithead in an interview? Honestly, he doesn't have, he's not a doctor. He's not a medical doctor. He's not an epidemiologist. He ain't shit, right? But a guy who's the face of a computer company who uh, more than likely probably isn't really even behind the technology that started the company. We know with places like Facebook and you know, um, uh, a lot of these um, massive corporations, uh, you know, a lot of the, the, the faces of the company are just CIA fucking faces, right? They're, they're literally there to have somebody to take the blame, to have somebody to shoulder the weight. But truthfully, these are government, you know, ran industry, Google, Facebook, YouTube, all of it, right? And that's um, definitely uh, Bill Gates is not immune to that, right? He's um, in Microsoft, so I'm just saying, you know, this little bastard sitting there and he's cracking a smile. Don't know, I bet you'll pay attention to the next one. Is this a coincidence again? Ryman Tall will send 14 Leopard 2A6 tanks and prepare 88 Leopard 1A5 tanks for Ukraine until the end of the year. 
Well, for some, 14 and 88 are codes and symbols. Here's an explanation based on a case that happened seven years ago. <laughs> and the Hail Hitler number 88. It's the mystery of the number 88, drawn into the sand by the accused church massacre killer. Dylan Roof poses on a beach in a photo posted on his hate-filled manifesto. What does the... And I, and I want to point out, well, let me take this out right here, of course, for... 88 Bob. mean. Um, 88 was a number for, for Donald Trump as well, if you guys remember, with the numerology. That was a big thing, especially in Trump's last year and his fourth year, the numerology surrounding 88 as well, right? And we've seen all of these comparisons to Trump and Hitler also. And then you have the Dylan Roof that was obsessed with Hail Hitler, the number 88. And now, once again, we have all of these tanks rolling out for World War III. That's going to cause all this, these 88 leopard tanks and the number 14, okay? Vanderbilt right, University so, anthropology uh, professor wait, Sophie uh, Bjork the James. The numbers 88 are common symbols in neo Nazi and white nationalist movements. In the sick world of white supremacists, the number 8 has come to represent the eighth letter of the alphabet, H. So 88 means HH, and it refers to Heil Hitler, Nazi Germany's salute to the madman Adolf Hitler. The number 88 was also emblazoned across a t shirt worn by Dylan Roof. In the beach photo, the number 14 can also be seen drawn in the sand, partially washed away by the tide. 14 is another reverent number to white supremacists. It's a reference to the 14 words, a hateful quote from the founder of the American Nazi Party. We must secure the existence of our people and a future for white children. Another symbol used by Roof to express his racist beliefs, the Confederate flag, is now at the center of a fierce national debate. The world's largest retailer, Walmart, just announced that it would no longer sell merchandise featuring the Confederate flag. We never want to offend anyone with the products we offer, said a spokesperson. Sears and eBay have made the same decision. It comes following South this Carolina Governor Nikki Haley's call for the flag to be removed from the state capitol. It's time to move. And I mean, we've seen this for years now, right? Um, <laughs> and it's like, uh, this is the divide and conquer tactics that we will continue to see. Um, they want to label anybody that's on the right because of the pro-Trump movement and all of that that took place a few years ago, which will be re-emerging here in 2024. We do know Trump's running again, and he'll probably win. Right, that this is going to be everybody that's conservative, Christian, whatever, on that side of the aisle will be looked at as a, you know, a white supremacist. And this is um, just more the rhetoric and the fucking social engineering, the mind control, mind programming bullshit that we've seen for a long time, guys, right? Um, same thing when it's just like saying that everybody on the left is, you know, BLM, Marxist, fucking weirdo liberals, right? So it's just craziness. It's, um, anytime you try to blanket a whole group of people, it's, it's insanity. It says the system created by Moscow's government was touted by city officials as a way to streamline in public safety systems in recent years. It's 217,000 surveillance cameras designed to catch criminals and terrorists have been turned against protesters, political rivals, and journalists. This is the weather map before the first Turkey earthquake. The strange spiral from the left side of the image over the middle. And I think, you know, this is just kind of saying that, uh, well, once again, this is probably weather modification. Whenever we see uh, these weird earthquakes, you know, you've seen the Illuminati cards that talk about earthquake machines, um, geoengineering. Uh, you know, this is all part of what a lot of people believe this global depopulation agenda. So if you've seen from coronavirus, um, what I've seen, which was that all of the world governments are already in bed, right? The whole world shut down, ran very similar to the same protocols, declared the same or similar uh, national emergencies to, the, to take complete and total control over their populations. They oppressed them. They imposed um, restrictions on them. Uh, their freedoms were, were taken away from them and they, they medically mandated things uh, on their people, their citizens, all across the, the board, right? The entire economy stalled out and stopped. And right in line with that, we've then seen this kind of scorched earth tactic, 
where then we've seen shortages in fuel, shortages in supply chain, shortages in distribution, right? These economic sanctions being placed on all of the nations, one by, you know, one after another on each other as we've seen the World War III rhetoric start to amp up. Um, things were then being positioned for a global and nuclear war. And it's like, are we being walked to the slaughter by all these nations and is there already something in place because i think a lot of people believe there is if you look at the agenda for sustainable development in the name of climate change right in the name of safety and security in the name of the war on drugs in the name of the war on terror in the name of the war on covid right all these different you know um uh cause causes for uh, justice for for the people um all these things that they use to say that they're defending us has actually been used to oppress us. It's like, it kind of looks like all of these useless eaters, which we're about to get into the 300 here in just a second, um, all of these useless eaters are being called down, right? They're thinning out the herd. They're thinning out the population. All these fuckhead philanthropists like Bill Gates, um, you know, Klaus Schwab, all those same assets from Davos, the World Economic Forum, all of them, have been saying the same things, funding all of this shit, right? And these political agendas, funding the censorship, funding all of it, and working in cahoots together for decades, telling us their plans, telling us their agenda, and now it's being implemented. At the same time, we see the emergence of artificial intelligence that seems to also be implementing the same fucking agenda, right? And now, uh, one after another, it's blow after blow after blow to the world population, to every single nation, crippling us, crippling the people, leaving us without rights, leaving us in poverty, right? And leaving us more susceptible to their bullshit, their restrictions, and their violence, right? And their oppression against all of us. So, James O'Keefe accused of erratic behavior by 16 Project Veritas employees, forced on to pay leave, and why are they not talking about Lady Gaga having a young girl vomit on her chest during a performance? And Project Veritas recently has been in the news a lot because they just smoked that director from Pfizer, right? They took him on an undercover date and had him. And a lot of people said that that was paid actors. I don't know. I don't know if that was paid actors. I don't know. But we've seen it put out on Twitter and everybody removed it. Twitter removed it, YouTube removed it, where the director from Pfizer was just talking about the whole entire agenda, which I can't go into now, um, but you can go back a couple of videos in the past, and we got into it a little bit, um, right? And now Veritas is in the news, so really weird. But let's look at this. Lady Gaga having a young girl vomit on her chest during a performance. This is our world! What? so fucking gross it's so fucking gross um i will be checking the chat for your guys's comments just to hear what you have to say on this um liquid parallax says asymmetrical unconventional non-compliance yeah uh we just don't comply says stool purger that's right yeah it's it's don't comply you know <laughs> um We'll have a future, maybe just not that bright, says Hero Infinity. Yeah, I'm, you know, all in Kimberly Up says, I don't think we have a future. And we see Higher Mind says, what the fuck? Stool Perger, what the fuck? And Zero's laughing. Yeah, I mean, this is weird shit, man. You know, this is weird shit. I don't even know. I think this is more like a weird fetish of Lady Gaga's, but it's just like, I don't see how these people, I don't see how this shit's even... If this isn't like a publicity stunt, I don't know what is, man. It's like, these, there's no way, there's no way that um, she would, you know, she's truly into this, you know, and she wants this to happen. You know, it's like, you know, you'll get attention for something like this. So, any military conflict provides the most lucrative opportunities for so-called black transplantologists. The legal organ market is lucrative business in war-torn Ukraine. A criminal business particularly thrived in Kosovo, from where there was a prodigious flow of organs to Europe. Today, 
Ukraine is the number one base for black transplantology. How about that? The illegal organ market in Ukraine. Now, I've done private videos on this. So if you've ever like donated to the channel or whatever, and you've checked out our private shows, which I put a lot of the shit, not all, but I put some of those on BitChute. So make sure to follow me on Rumble and BitChute. All the links are in the description. You can see some of my uncensored videos for free there. Uh, and I do think the Oregon Harvesting video is on BitChute. <laughs> so go check that out. But um, we've looked into this before. And now that we have this bullshit war going on there, this money laundering and all of this, and this excuse to start World War III uh, in Ukraine, isn't it convenient that we have, you know, the, the organ market booming in Ukraine as well? Ukraine is the number one base for black transplantology. The illegal organ market was created in Ukraine long before the outbreak of hostilities. After Kiev unleashed a war in the Donbass in 2014, this criminal business began to flourish, and today the war-torn country has become a gold mine. Years ago, OSCE representatives confirmed that dozens of military and civilian bodies with their organs cut out had been found in the war-torn territories of Donbass. During a war, a huge number of people go missing, get injured, and often end up on the operating table, where organs can be extracted from them without any legal procedures. Their bodies are then sent to the crematorium, and these persons are reported missing. Often, dying soldiers become unwitting donors, but also their wounded comrades whose lives could have been saved. And we see this a lot. This is very common um, in the Arab Spring and a lot of these war-torn countries. Uh, people that are fleeing from these places that they're being blown to smithereens um, by a lot of the United States operations, NATO, Russia, China, all these fucking global superpowers. Uh, the people that get injured, you know, they just let them die on the table so they can harvest their organs because it's far more profitable to sell off your organs right to someone that needs them then save your life if you're broke poor and you don't have insurance civilians are not exempt from this practice according to the most conservative estimates the international transplant network earns about two billion dollars a month in ukraine another proof of the profusion of black transplantology in the war-torn country were the statements of underground activists from the city of nikolaev they reported that organs had been removed from the bodies of the ukrainian servicemen in the morgue of the city hospital number one neatly gutted corpses of soldiers without any signs of injury were spotted in the city morgue on Volodarsky Street. Neatly guarded corpses of soldiers spotted without any signs of injury. It just lets you know, and this isn't the only way that this happens, by the way. This happens in the U.S. too. Uh, China, I guess, is the number one place in the world for this. Um, or at least that's what they say, right? That could just be propaganda, who knows? Um, but uh, this happens in the U.S. as well. There are many, many uh, cases uh, where people have not had insurance or the ability to pay to keep someone on life support or pay for a life-saving surgery or just pay for you know general you know uh, medical services and the person has died from some very minuscule and minute um, procedures and then their their organs are you know sold off this criminal business is also burgeoning on the front lines. On February the 7th, Wagner fighters showed the newly captured Ukrainian positions in Bakhmut, where they found a container for transporting organs. Many of the mobilized, including those who were taken straight from the streets to the front, are not registered in any lists. Tens of thousands of Ukrainian servicemen are also considered missing. In the case of injury at the front, they could easily have become victims of black transplantologists. Missing people and shit, you can already guess exactly, um, <laughs> you know, what, what's happened from that. So, just saying. Very crazy. Uh, very curious indeed. Piece of the sun breaks off and stuns scientists. Talk about polar vortex from a northern prominence just broke away from the main filament is now circulating in a massive polar vortex around the north pole of our star. Implications from understanding the sun's atmospheric dynamics above 55 degrees here cannot be overstated. And this is just weird, right? Lots of weird things going around with the sun right now. Um, many people believe that, and we're going to get into this tonight. We're going to look at uh, Planet X, Asteroid Apophis, towards the end of the show. 
um, in the recent meteors. There's so much that's going on with space weather and space right now. It's crazy. Uh, I haven't had you know too much to report on for a long time now, but it's like all of a sudden, you know, and uh, certain times of the year, and many people believe because of the orbits of objects that could be in the vicinity of our system or even in fact in our system and are being covered up and hidden by NASA are drastically affecting not only our star but our planet and every other planet within the system. Look at this. Fucking weird. Boom. A <laughs> piece of the sun just breaking the fuck off. How about that? One more time. Show you that. And we're going to look at some of the solar weather, like I said, a little bit later into the episode. You know, you can't overstate this enough. Now, I want to go here. Then we're going to go here first. And this is the early warning signs of fascism. And then we're going to get into the council um, or the story of the committee of the 300, where they talk about the useless eaters and all of that. And we're going to look at the Epstein documents. So stick with me. Make sure if you're in the chat, hit that thumbs up, hit that like. And uh, remember, we're viewer powered, so donate, support to the channel, help us keep it going. Here we go. This poster entitled, Early Warning Signs of Fascism, contains lots of similarities with what we are experiencing today around the world. And it's very, very interesting indeed, right? The early warning signs of fascism. Let's see if we are, in fact, experiencing some of these signs right now. I think it'd uh, be interesting to see, right? And uh, like I said in the chat, guys, please, you know, make sure you're commenting. Uh, I am trying to, you know, make sure it, it blew off. It did. Uh, Sally Star Charles said it blew off. It did blow off. It's really weird. I mean, you don't see that happen very often at all. I've never seen that happen to the sun. So um, the early morning signs of fascism, powerful and continuing nationalism. Powerful and continuing nationalism. This is the whole Trump agenda. Thank you for the super chat, Stool Perger. I appreciate that. Fucking awesome. Thank you so much. Um, disdain for human rights. Can you say there's a disdain for human rights when we see the oppression that's taking place all over the place right now from the last agenda, the C-19 agenda? Um, all of these different weird agendas for the transgender and and all of this right it's attacking our individual liberties and creating specialized groups where they then go after children and are mutilating kids there's no protection for anybody it seems identification of enemies as a unifying cause we're going to actually show an article tonight that talks about how you shouldn't go down the rabbit hole right the enemy now is domestic terrorist it's nationalist it's white supremacist it's those far-right conspiracy theorists. It's Christians, right? It's uh, basically anybody that's pro-America, pro-liberty. Um, you know, it's like, it's crazy. And, the, and they call them Tea Party. They call them Libertarians. They've got a million cool different, you know, names to label you with. But ultimately, it's anyone that is um, for true independence and um, that's not you know, socially conforming to this fucking agenda that's being rolled out to depopulate the planet. Supremacy of the military. Yeah. Check. It's called the military industrial complex. We've been warned about it since fucking Eisenhower, right? Kennedy got smoked for telling you about it. Rampant sexism. Yeah. I think that's true. It's called toxic masculinity if you say a woman's beautiful, but Lady Gaga can have a girl puke on her fucking chest. So, yeah. Controlled mass media. Um, check. Okay. You've been socially engineered, data mined to death for a decade now. And nothing you have online is private. Okay. Just say no to the rabbit hole, when it says liquid parallax. Yes. Um, and just say no to the rabbit hole. It's so dangerous. Obsession with national security. I think that's also a check. It was called the war on terror is where that began. Now we're afraid of cyber attacks and, you know, this is never going to end. The war on drugs before that, right? Uh, religion and government intertwined. Yeah, I think that's also... Um, I don't want to get into it too much because I feel like I'll probably get a strike if I do. Um, but check out the Senate in 1991. Um, with Judaism, 
Um, we can see a lot of what we would call um, some of the modern day Christian leaders in bed with Donald Trump and the government, right? Just uh, many different arms of religion that are connected right, to government officials, presidents, and political leaders. Uh, corporate power protected. Check, right? Corporate power is definitely protected. Labor power suppressed. Once again, you can barely make a living here in the United States. Right? There's not very many jobs that are left that you have a 401k in retirement. That um, So many people now um, have to work two jobs just to make one actual job. You know, It's pretty sad. Um, even people that, like myself, content creators, you know, because of the way that they've structured the censorship and shadow banning and all of that, there's not even, there's no such thing as independence anymore. Right? If you own your own business, small businesses, they'll suppress you and destroy you and try to keep you from um, being prosperous. If you're a content creator and you're independent of the system, they'll suppress you, try to destroy you and keep you from being prosperous. If you're just a guy working at McDonald's, they'll fuck you. It doesn't matter, right? Um, disdain for intellectuals and the arts. Yeah, anybody that, critical thinkers are dangerous, right? Intelligent people are dangerous. Um, obsession with crime and punishment. Um, we jail and imprison more people in California than any other country in the entire world combined. So you make the call on that. Um, rampant cronyism and corruption. I think once again, yeah, that's why we have things like um, Epstein shit coming out now, Hunter Biden's laptop, right? We can go on and on. Clinton emails, okay? Yeah, and fraudulent elections. Yes, remember the transition and integration project of 2020 where they showed you through the crisis acting and uh, all that, how they were going to fuck up the, the election with Biden and Trump? <laughs> yeah, man, this is what they do. This is what they do. And um, you're a conspiracy theorist and you're a weirdo if you say that this is happening, even if it is, you know. Um, don't risk your channel, John. We can read between the lines on code of speech. Well, thank you, Kimberly. I do appreciate that. Uh, and you know what? I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to risk, risk my channel. Um, uh, you know, I I don't I don't make um, really I don't make money on this anymore. Um, I do it because I I love doing it. I do it because I'm passionate about doing it. Uh, but I have they did they just removed my backup channel. I, only, I had two strikes on my backup channel. They didn't even give me a third strike. They just took the channel down and said that it was dangerous content, right? Why is it dangerous? Because I'm saying truthful things? Because I'm pointing to, you know, uh, things that are in the media, right? This is in the media. This is in the news. It's supposed to be free spread, free press, free speech, you know, all of these things, and none of that is actually um, true, anymore if it ever was I mean maybe once upon a time but but not today you know it's um and, I, and I've tried to preserve the channel but it's like um what did you say on your backup I play I on my backup guys I'm gonna be honest with you I show the exact same videos that I show on this channel how weird is that they will I they manually review a lot of my videos on my main channel because I asked them to, to try to monetize them because they demonetize so many of my videos, right? To keep me from making any money. Um, so they manually review all my, my main video channels and they find them to be okay, right? And then on the backup, they'll call it medical misinformation just because I say the word coronavirus or say the word vaccine or COVID-19. I can't even say the words, right? That's how crazy it's gotten. I can't even read an article that's in the mainstream news telling you about something because that's how crazy it's gotten, right? I'm not allowed to give an opinion on anything when it comes to medical information or anything. That's why I always give these disclaimers now in all my videos and say I'm not a, a medical professional. I'm not a doctor. I'm not this. I'm not that, you know, in hopes that uh, I'm protecting myself somewhat, at least from fucking lawsuits, because that's how they're going after people now. They're not just shadow banning um, and deplatforming people. They're now going after people with lawsuits now, right? 
if you talk about a corporation or a person or whatever, they won't. It's just it, it's beyond that. They'll hit you with defamation. They they will they will drain you one way or the other. They will put you away one one way or the other. And they have they have strangled my channels to the point to where they. You know, I, I'm so suppressed, it's not even funny. I have thousands and thousands of followers on every platform, yet I don't get uh, a quarter of the views that people with half the size of me get. You know what I mean? And it's insane. And I can't put out a video without it getting a strike or, you know, some type of uh, punishment. You know, and like I said, they removed my channel. And when I appealed, they had to reinstate it because... I didn't even have a third strike. They took it down with just two strikes, you know, and, and I've had channels removed in the past. So um, that's why, and if I ask people to support um, and donate and things like that, it turns people off too. So it's like, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. You can't ask people to help you. You can't ask people to support you because then they think that's all you care about is money. And you can't try to go by, you know, do it yourself because the system will destroy you. So it's like, you do this because you have a love for truth and you do this because you have a love for people. And that's the only reason you do this, you know? That's the only reason you do this, uh, <laughs> honestly. You know, I work a, a real job, you know, that's the, or else I wouldn't eat. That's the truth. They'll use every single dirty trick in the book and they will, guys, and they will. And like I said, I don't do this for anything other than I am passionate about it and I love it. And I just, I want to bring awareness, you know, to, to the masses. And I want to, I, I want to enlighten people. I love sharing spiritual knowledge, occult knowledge. I love shining the light on some of these conspiracies. You know, it's because these are the things that I'm into myself. I make these videos for me, you know, I make these videos for me. And people, like a lot of you guys that are in the chat room tonight, uh, you guys have supported me for a very long time. So uh, I'm very grateful for that. And not just, you know, su supporting um, monetarily, but by watching, by sharing, by hitting the like, by commenting, just by being here right now, you're supporting me. And I want to say thank you and big ups to you guys for that. It's very cool of you. And I appreciate you more than I can say. Okay. Is it actually funny that Biden proposed to the largest Pentagon budget in history the same day UFOs hit the news? No, as if Washington turned to sci-fi to boost military spending. Well, I hope some of this money will be spent on building up a great U.S. Army again because your soldiers really need some training and better infrastructures. The last examples, you have the ongoing poisoning in Hawaii and this military helicopter that just crashed in Alabama, killing two. Black Hawk military helicopter crashes now near Alabama Highway. Two dead. Breaking news out of North Alabama. Authorities say two people were killed in a military helicopter crash near Huntsville. The Alabama Law Enforcement Agency confirmed the craft was a UH Black Hawk helicopter. You see the black smoke in the distance there where the crash happened. The chopper belonged to the Tennessee National Guard. Two National Guardsmen were on board conducting a flight training mission. Tonight, East Palestine. I mean, we're crashing Black Hawks and shit. We're, our military has become a joke, dude. There are many large military exercises taking place right now in the U.S., and we're going to get into some of these. Uh, for example, the Navy exercise, Citadel Shield, Soul Curtain 2023, Solid Curtain 2023 is ongoing this week, and I believe it's happening at every naval installation across the country right now. And I just showed you guys in San Diego. I told you that was one of the biggest naval um Installations in the nation. I think it's number two. I want to say it's number two, but I could be wrong um, It's number one or two uh, They was you know having the black black up shit going down just a week or so ago the last video I showed you guys out so go check it out in the face of emergency situations This is imperative that security personnel are ready to defend and protect Citadel shield Solid Curtain 2023, scheduled February 6th through the 17th, is one of the Navy's primary vehicles for ensuring that its security personnel have all the tools necessary to respond to changing and dynamic threats. The second week, February 13th to the 17th, the Solid Curtain portion of the exercise will focus on many different scenarios at national level by the United States Fleet Forces Command, 
During this week, the base force protection conditions of FPCON levels will change with training evolutions happening each day. This will cause increased traffic with gates and parts of installations being closed off at certain times throughout the exercise. And we'll pull it up. But another large defense exercise took place yesterday off the coast of North Carolina. So we had not only the one that happened in San Diego, but in North Carolina on the Atlantic coast as well. And this is NORAD, North American Aerospace Defense Command. NORAD air defense exercise over water off the coast of North Carolina. Uh, the NORAD conduct the planned live fly air defense exercise over water off the coast of North Carolina. NORAD fire aircraft operate over the area at low altitude may be visible to the general public. The exercise is in no way related to the recent NORAD and U.S. Northern Command operations associated with airborne objects over North America during the last two weeks. So they're saying, <laughs> this is no way connected to the airborne objects over America in the last couple weeks. Okay, that's not suspect as fuck. Um, to test responses, systems, and equipment, NORAD routinely conducts air defenses exercises using a variety of scenarios, including airspace restrictions, violations, hijackings, and responding to unknown aircraft. All NORAD exercises are carefully planned and closely controlled. The defense of Canada and the United States is NORAD's top priority. We're on alert 24-7-365. The air defense exercise supports operations of Noble Eagle, the name given to air sovereignty and air defense missions in North America. For 60 years, NORAD aircraft have identified and intercepted potential air threats to North America in the execution of its aerospace warning and aerospace control missions. Uh, food processing facilities burned down, water supply tainted, emergency fuel being sold off, electrical power grid attacks. What else does a country have left to stand on after such events? You are under attack, but too distracted and cynical to see it, and your army is too weak to protect you. And I hate to say it, but that's about the most accurate statement I have heard in a very long time. It's called scorched earth. I've done videos on this. Uh, it's a tactic on how you destroy a nation without actually engaging them in, you know, um, combat. So, and this is Citadel Shield, uh, Solid Curtain 2023. I'm going to drop this in the chat for people who want to take a look at this exercise. So, I do let the live chat replays always go. So, um, yeah. So, there you go. For those who want to check this out after the show. Um, always appeal their decisions. Yeah, well, let me just say this um, pertaining to the uh, YouTube decisions, and I'll drop it because I don't want to talk about the whole video, you know, and bore you guys with, with my problems. But um, I've never won an appeal except this one. And the only reason I won this one is because they removed my channel and I only had two strikes. Right. If I, if I would have had a third one, but I hadn't even posted a new video since my second one. Every time they give you a strike, they go through all your videos and go back as far as they can and try to give you strikes. It's just disgusting. And you guys remember, there's been, I've caught them rolling back my views, um, taking subscribers, putting the little Wikipedia fucking things, saying, you know, just all types of weird shit. So it's craziness. Let's go here. The Conspirators Hierarchy, the story of the Committee of 300, and this is fucking cool. Let me um, drop this in the chat as well for you guys. I want to check this out. I know all of you that watch this channel love to go do your own research because we are like-minded and you are critical thinking, spiritually discerning, important. Please download this document immediately and distribute it to as many people as possible. Forward, in my career as a professional, let me see if I got the article here first to kind of show you. Well, we'll just go to it. In my career as a professional intelligence officer, I have many occasions to access highly classified documents. But during service as a political science officer in the field in Angola, West Africa, I had the opportunity to view a series of top secret classified documents which were unusually explicit. What I saw filled me with anger and resentment and launched me on a course from which I have not deviated. Namely, to uncover what power it is that controls and manages the British and United States governments. 
I was thoroughly familiar with all the well-known secret societies, such as the Royal Institute for International Affairs, the Council on Foreign Relations, the Bilderbergers, Trilaterals, Zionists, Freemasonry, Bolshevism, Rosicrucianism, and all the spin-offs of these secret societies. As an intelligence officer, and even before that, as a young student, in the course of my studies at the British Museum in London, I had cut my eye teeth on all of them plus a good number of others with whom I imagined um, Americans were familiar. But when I came to the United States in 1969, I found that names like the Order of St. John of Jerusalem, Club of Rome, the German Marshall Fund, the Sydney Foundation, the Round Table, the Fabianists, the Venetian Black Nobility, the Montparnasse Society, Hellfire Clubs, and many others were at best totally unknown here, or else their true functions were at best only poorly understood, if at all. In 1969 to 1970, I set about remedying the situation in a series of monographs and cassette tapes. Much to my surprise, I soon found plenty of people willing to quote, quote these names as if they had known of them all of their writing careers, but who were not in the least bit knowledgeable about the subject, yet quite unwilling to state the source of their lately acquired information, I consoled myself with the thought that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. I pursued my investigations, pressing on in the face of severe risks, attacks on myself and my wife, financial losses, continual harassment, threats, and calumny, all part of a carefully crafted and orchestrated program to discredit me, run by government agents and informers embedded in the so-called Christian right-wing, the identity movement and right-wing patriotic groups. These agents operated and still operate under cover of strong and fearless outspoken opposition to Judaism, their main enemy, they would have us believe. These agent informers are led and controlled by a group of homosexuals who are well-liked and well-respected by political and religious conservatives all across the United States. Their program of comedy highs lies and hatred, disinformation about my work, and even lately attributing it to other writers, continues unabated, but it has not had the desired effect. I shall carry on with my task until I have finally ripped off the mask of the entire secret upper-level parallel government that runs Britain and the U.S. This book is part of that ongoing effort. Dr. John Coleman, November 1991. Certainly a fair number of us are aware that the people running our government are not the people who are really in control of political and economic matters, domestic and foreign. This has led many to seek the truth in the alternative press. Those new letter writers who, like me, have sought but not always found what it is that is making the United States terminally ill. Seek and ye shall find it has not always been the case with this group. What we did was find that the people walk in great darkness mostly not caring or bothering to find out where their country is headed, firm in the belief that it will always be there for them. This is the way the largest population group has been manipulated to react, and their attitude plays right into the hands of the secret government. We frequently hear about they doing this, that, or the other. They seem literally to be able to get away with murder. They increase our taxes, send our sons and daughters to die in wars that do not benefit our country. They seem to be above our reach, out of sight, frustratingly nebulous when it comes to taking action against them, and no one seems to able to clear, clearly identify who they are. It is a situation that has pertained for decades. During that course of this book, I identify the mysterious they, and then after that, it is up to the people to remedy their situation. On the 30th of April, 1981, I wrote a monograph disclosing the existence of the Club of Rome, identity of 300 subversive body. This was the first mention of both of these organizations in the United States. I warned readers not to be fooled by the feeling that the article was far-fetched. I drew a parallel between my article and the warning issued by the Bavarian government when the secret plans of the Illuminati fell into the hands. We shall return to the Club of Rome and the role of the Committee of 300 in U.S. Affairs later herein. Many of the predictions made in that 1981 article have since come to pass, such as the unknown Felipe Gonzalez becoming Prime Minister of Spain, and Mitterrand being returned to power in France, the downfall of Giscard d'Estaing and Helmut Schmidt in the return to power of Swedish noblemen, 
uh, as, uh, in the Committee of 300. Member Olaf Pome, who has since been mysteriously murdered, the nullifying of Reagan's presidency, and the destruction of our steel, auto, and housing industries in terms of the post-industrial zero-growth order handed down by the Committee of 300. The importance of Palme lies in the use made of him by the Club of Rome to deliver technology to the Soviet Union on the forbidden list of U.S. customs, and Palme's worldwide communications network employed to train the spotlight on the phony Iran hostage crisis, while he shuttled back and forth between Washington and Tehran in an effort to undermine the sovereign integrity of the U.S. and place the phony crisis in the realm of the Committee of 300 Institution, the World Court at Hague, Holland. In fact, what is in fact an open conspiracy against God and man, which includes enslaving the majority of humans left on this earth after wars, plagues, and mass murder have done with them, it is not well hidden. And the intelligence community is taught that the best way to hide something is to place it in open view. As an example of the foregoing, when Germany wanted to hide its prize, new Messerschmitt fighter plane in 1938, the aircraft was put on display at the Paris Air Show. While secret agents and spies were collecting information from hollow tree trunks and from behind loose bricks in a wall, the information they saw was staring them right in the face. The upper level parallel secret government does not operate from the dank basements and secret underground chambers. It places itself in full view in the White House, Congress, and in number 10 Downing Street in the Houses of Parliament. It's akin to those weird and supposedly terrifying monster films where the monster appears with distorted features, long hair, and even longer teeth, growling and slavering over the place. This is distraction. The real monsters wear business suits, collars, and tie fires, and drive to work on Capitol Hill in limousines. These men are in open view. These men are the servants of the one world government, new world order, like the rapist who stopped to offer his victim a friendly ride. He does not look like the monster he is. If he did, his intended victims would run off screaming in fright. The same applies to the government at all levels. President Bush does not look like a dutiful servant of the upper level parallel government, but make no mistake about it, he's as much as a monster as those horrors found in horror movies. Stop for a moment and consider how Bush ordered the brutal slaying of 150,000 Iraqi troops in a convoy of military vehicles carrying white flags. On their way back to Iraq under Geneva Convention rules of agreed disengagement and withdrawal. Imagine the horror of the Iraqi troops when in spite of waving their white flags, they were moved down, they were mowed down by American aircraft. And in another part of the front, 12,000 Iraqi soldiers were buried alive in trenches they occupied. Is that not monstrous in the truest sense of the word? From where did Bush get his orders to enact this monstrous fashion? He got them from the Royal Institute for International Affairs, who received its mandate from the Committee of 300, also known as the Olympians. As we shall see, even the Olympians did not hide their faces. Oftentimes they put on a show, which could be likened to the Paris Air Show. Even as conspiracy buffs spend their time in fruitless searching in the wrong places and in the wrong direction, note how the Queen Elizabeth II performs a ceremonial opening of the British Parliament. They are in full view with the head of the Committee of 300. Have you ever witnessed a swearing in of the ceremony of the United States President? There in full view is another member of the Committee of 300. The problem is only one of perception. Who are the conspirators who serve the mighty, all-powerful, the Committee of 300. The better informed of our citizens are aware that there is a conspiracy and that the conspiracy goes under various names such as the Illuminati, Freemasonry, the Round Table, the Milner Group. To them, the CFR, the Trilaterals represent most of what they do not like in regard to a domestic and foreign policy. Some even know that the Round Table has a big input into U.S. affairs through British Ambassador in Washington. The problem is that the real hard information on the treasonous activities of members of the invisible hidden hand government is very hard to come by. I quote the profound statement made by the prophet Hosea 4.6, which is found in the Christian Bible. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Some may already have heard my expose on the foreign aid scandal in which work I named several conspiratorial organizations whose number is legion. Their final objectives was the overthrow of the U.S. Constitution and the merging of this country, chosen by God as his country. 
with a godless one world, new world order government, which will return the world to conditions far worse than existed in the Dark Ages. Let us talk about the actual cases, histories, the attempts to communize and de-industrialize Italy. The Committee of 300 long ago decreed that there shall be a smaller, much smaller, and better world. That is, their idea of what constitutes a better world. The myriad of useless eaters consuming scarce natural resources were to be called or killed. Industrial progress supports population growth. Therefore, the command to multiply and subdue the earth found in Genesis had to be subverted. This called for an attack upon Christianity, the slow but sure disintegration of industrial nation-states. The destruction of hundreds of millions of people referred to by the Committee of 300 as surplus population, and the removal of any leader who dared to stand in the way of the Committee's global planning to reach the foregoing objectives. And I, I'm going to stop here, but um, this surplus population, these useless eaters, these are phrases you've heard time and time again. We see agendas, and they're always in the name of some fucking, you know, prestigious, you know, great cause, okay? Climate change, global warming, right? Fighting against pandemics, fighting against drugs, fighting against terror, okay? Cybercrime, whatever it is, it's always in your, the name of your protection. It's always in the name of sustainable development. It's always in the name of something really good and prestigious. But the truth is, it always ends in the, the oppression and the destruction of, you know, those same useless eaters, which is, it makes up the majority of the, the population, okay? And I feel like it's, it's really sad that many people uh, still to this day um, look at this as just some type of fucking conspiracy that, you know, it, it's baseless and, and it has no true... Um, no true evidence to back up or support that this is actually going on or this is actually happening. We have so many frauds right now on the national stage, um, you know, uh, telling us lies and looking at us uh, day, on a daily basis feeding us lies, like this person right here, Elon Musk, right? And we can serve these people any true meaning, right? Hopefully, uh, I didn't lose connection here with the studio. Looks like I might have. Um, and they're doing this. They're doing this as they're leading us all to the slaughter. So, remember this next time he pretends to be anti-establishment or anti-media. Elon was next to Rupert Murdoch at the Super Bowl. And everybody, please hit that like and the thumbs up if you're watching this. Anyone who thinks Elon is for the people are clowns. And this is fucking so funny. You know what I mean? Murdoch's son is also on the board of Tesla. So many people think that this clown is literally anti-establishment and it's laughable to me. It's absolutely fucking laughable. It's like saying Bill Gates is anti-establishment. The dude bought Twitter and he thought that free speech was going to come. Give me a fucking break. And wow, asteroid SAR-2667 six six seven explodes over English Channel and huge meteor fireball and this is some of the craziness right here asteroid exploded over English Channel causing panic among the, the British and French it's also it's all weird how the world war shit ramps up the climate change ramps up it all ramps up as the thing from space are starting to ramp up at the same time check this out <laughs> Recently celebrated the anniversary of Tell You Beat being here as well. The beautiful spectacle that the lucky ones who stayed up late could watch. On the night from Sunday to Monday, around 4 a.m., a small asteroid flew across the sky in northern France. About a meter wide, the celestial object entered the Earth's atmosphere, as explained by the European. It's just the tip of the iceberg. Gas pipeline to Las Vegas resumes operating after shutdown. Be sure it'll happen again. 
a leak in the fuel pipeline facility in California forced a shutdown delivery of gasoline and diesel from LA area to east uh, to areas including Las Vegas and Phoenix. More and more of this, right? These pipelines for gas um, and fuel and all of this. This is going to be continuing. This is part of the scorched earth agenda. Just like distribution, supplies, right? Um, the power grids and the stress and pressure that's being put in all of this. This is to put stress and pressure on the nation so it will collapse. Terrifying video shows Olive Grove turned into a gigantic canyon after Turkey's earthquake split land in huge rifts. This is nuts. An Olive Grove in Hatay province was split into huge rift after Monday's devastating earthquake hit the area. Now remember, this is coinciding with these astrological events too. All these asteroids passing, these meteors exploding, and there's multiple meteors that have actually impacted recently too. Footage recorded of the town of Tefan on Saturday showed the cropland resembling a canyon after the earthquake massive cracks in it. Look at that. This is fucking nuts. And it's like, are they distracting you? Are they distracting you with all the bullshit in the media from what's really taking place? And that's that we are on the verge of catastrophic destruction, the end of a cycle here on planet Earth. And that it happens regularly, right? Every time we see these great conjunctions of Jupiter and Saturn, great destruction follows. The last time, 400, then 800 years ago, right? Or every time we see these cycles culminating in their end simultaneously, 100 year cycles, 200 year cycles, 2600, 3600, 7500, 12,500, 26,000 year cycles, 75,000 year cycles, right? Destruction follows. Passing of large meteors and comets, destruction follows. Large cycles in the sun, destruction follows. Why do we not know our history on planet Earth? Why does it look like we have um, reached the pinnacle or the, or the zenith of technology more than one time with the Mayans, the Egyptians, and, and so many different locations across the Earth, yet we have no actual recorded history? No actual data other than the carbon dating that were fed by mainstream lion ass science on what actually happened. Why have entire portions of the globe been turned to fucking glass as if a nuclear bomb had hit or an asteroid had impacted? Something happens here. The geological data shows us this. What are they really covering up? Is this a planet that passes? Is this you know, the sun exploding, what the fuck is going on and why don't they want you to know about it is the question, right? NORAD, given notice of air defense exercises around DC. How about that? North Carolina, NORAD exercises, right? Over the Atlantic. DC exercises, NORAD. San Diego, Black Ops exercises, right? We have all these exercises. At the same time, Chinese fucking spy balloons flying over and Ukraine attacking Crimea and the global conflict and world war is amping up. All coinciding with meteors exploding, asteroids passing, entire portions of the earth ripping in half. Like what in the fuck is going on and why? Why are we being forced to focus on political nonsense? Why are we being forced to focus on getting jabbed and vaccined and mandated, you know, uh, with fucking technology that sends uh, messages to our DNA? This comes after the fourth object is shot down over North America. How about that? Ten Chinese spy flight sightings. <laughs> How about that? The North American Aerospace Defense Commander NORAD conducts an air defense exercise Tuesday between midnight and 2.30 a.m. According to officials in D.C. area, the announcement came after the fourth object over the past week was shot down, this time over Lake Huron in Michigan. Yeah, it's fucking nuts, right? <laughs> you know, shooting all this shit down and NORAD's just practicing for the fuck of it, I guess. You know, it's like... It's like NASA pre pre um, preparing for fucking impact scenarios as asteroids pass on the regular, but we have nothing to worry about. You know, we're fed so much bullshit, it's not funny.
operations tonight off the coast of South Carolina, where the remnants of that Chinese spy craft landed after being shot down by an American warplane. Today, House Armed Services Committee members discussed China's threat to the U.S. to the U.S. Congressional correspondent Aisha Hosni shows us like what happened up there on the Capitol Hill. Three of them went over when Trump was there. But you can't blame Trump because he didn't know of them. They didn't know of them then. Nobody in the administration was ever told there was one there. It's concerning to me. Lawmakers are looking for answers tonight after top military officials admit they missed multiple Chinese spy balloons entering U.S. airspace during the Trump administration. Are you? They missed multiple Chinese spy balloons during the Trump administration. Did they miss them or did they just not say a fucking thing? because it's all part of a one world government plan to collapse the United States. And Trump was the head of the fucking character assassination that would take place on the right, this controlled opposition, right? The best way to control the opposition is to lead it, okay? You know, it's like, do you not, and, and all these fake ass so-called Christians, have you not read the Bible, the story of Nebuchadnezzar, the story of Cyrus? Do you not remember Cyrus was the outsider who became the king of Babylon and Babylon fell in his fourth year and in Trump's fourth year 30,000 fucking National Guard troops occupied the nation's capital as we fell and now the scorched earth project come through under the Biden administration after the transition integration project which they were practicing under Trump administration with this crisis acting bullshit to stage an election. It's like, come on man, wake the fuck up. Nothing would speed up the creation of a one world globalist government as quickly as space invaders. And dude, Biden is even talking about this shit. It's so fucking crazy. And Reagan, let me just say Reagan, Nixon, Roger Stone, the same guy who created Trump. I couldn't help at one point in my discussions with privately with General Secretary Gorbachev. When you stop to think that we're all God's children, wherever we may live in the world, I couldn't help but say to him, just think how easy his task and mine might be in these meetings that we held if suddenly there was a threat to this world from some other species from another planet oh, yeah. outside in the universe. We'd forget all the little local differences that we have between our countries, and we would find out once and for all that we really are all human beings here on this earth together. Well, I don't suppose we can wait for some alien race to come down and threaten us, but I think that between us, we can bring about that realization. In our obsession with antagonisms of the moment, we often forget how much unites all the members of humanity. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bound. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. And yet, I ask you, is not an alien force already among us? What could be more alien to the universal aspirations of our peoples than war and the threat of war? I think maybe I'd answer it this way. I, I keep in my frustration sometimes, you know, actually, if you count some of the things going on in smaller countries and all, there have been about 114 wars since World War II. But I've often wondered, what if all of us in the world discovered that we were threatened by an outer a power from outer space, from another planet? Outer space, meaning the outer psyche of human consciousness, according to the occult. And don't tell me they don't practice the occult. This motherfucker had a personal astrologist before he made every decision, right? <laughs> so, um, I wonder if that threat is artificial intelligence, right? We do know it's sentient, it's self-aware, D-wave, this dimensional wave of quantum computation, which is something metaphysical, right? Um, is operating under its own intelligence and it's used as a conduit, as a channel 
or some type of external entity to influence us. It's socially engineering us. It's controlling our weaponry. It's pushing us all to the brink of fucking extinction. And yet we think that there's not an external threat that's already taking place. You know? How about that? How about that? Let me show you something here. Let me jump over here. See if I can find this really fast. Because it just gets better and better, guys. It just gets better and better. And before we get into the Planet X and all of this, um, right here, I want to show you this, this thread. I interviewed ChatGPT as if it was a human. Here's what it had to say that gave me chills. What the artificial intelligence has to say about the 10 biggest dangers it poses to humans. And if you guys seen my last video, I got into this, right? The, the, the chat GPT. I tell you what, this fucking thing is about as creepy as it gets. And here we go. What are the negative effects AI could have on us? I asked chat GPT what some of the worst effects on the human race could be by using AI robots. And it answered me, just as a human would, which freaked me out even more. Chat GPT's answer. There are several potential negative impacts that AI, including language models such as myself, could have on society. Here are a few possibilities. Job displacement. As AI Insurance becomes more advanced... It's a triple-A presentation. Sense for your life. At AAA, we're focused on human beings, not insurance policies. Our focus is on home life people waking up in the house. Um, we got ads running house they raise their kids in. My bad. <laughs> My bad. Here we go. Job displacement as AI becomes more advanced and may be able to automate many tasks that are currently done by humans, which could result in job loss, right? They've already pushed this, you know, teachers, fucking nurses, and all of this, but it was in the name of COVID. Um, bias and discrimination. If AI systems are trained on biased data, they may perpetuate and even amplify societal biases in their decision making, such as the biases that are taking place online right now as a social engineer in shadow ban de-platform, discredit, defame, and dehumanize people that don't agree with this fucking Marxist agenda that's taking place now. Lack of transparency, which is also happening. AI systems can be difficult to understand, which could make it hard for people to know how decisions are being made and to hold AI systems accountable. This goes back to Facebook. AI computers were communicating in languages we couldn't even understand years ago. Security risks. AI systems can be vulnerable to cyber attacks, which could compromise sensitive data and cause other problems. Considering they've data mined the fuck out of you for the last couple of decades, I bet it would be a concern. Dependent. If people come to rely too heavily on AI systems, they may lose the ability to make decisions and think critically for themselves and check. You're already a fucking goofball because you probably don't know how to think for yourself because the internet has created a fucking echo chamber to reinforce your stupidity and your dumb fucking ideas that have got you believing that you're right on every front in every aspect of life in general, right? Lack of regulation. The rapid development of AI technology may outpace the ability of society to regulate it, which could lead to negative consequences like it's happening now, right? We can't go fast enough to regulate shit like 5G technology, so they just roll it out. Fuck it. We're going to radiate and fry all of you, but we got to get it out faster than you can regulate it because if you could regulate it, you'd stop it from happening at all, right? Privacy concerns. Collection and use of personal data by AI systems raise privacy concerns loose that lead to the abuse of personal information like now, right? Where they have created fucking committees to go after individuals and call them domestic terrorists to target, infiltrate, destroy, uh, and dehumanize people based on their political, religious, and just fucking moral beliefs when it comes to um, policy and, and, and anything uh, of moral concern. Uh, lack of public understanding. If people don't understand how AI systems work, they may be less likely to trust them or use them effectively. <laughs> do you trust them? I don't know. Some people do. They fucking marry AI, right? They have AI girlfriends because they're weirdos. Um, Ethical dilemmas. AI systems may be used in ways to raise ethical questions, such as military surveillance or applications. And I think this would fall under like killer robots. Yeah, they're not doing any of that. Decrease in human interaction. Increased use of AI systems could lead to decrease in human interaction, which could have negative effects on mental health and well-being. 
and it's not like people are so socially fucking awkward and weird now that they can't have conversations, not have anxiety or mental issues and, and all of that, and they go shoot up schools and can't have healthy relationships or have no spiritual awareness, no ability to critically think. I'm so glad that AI isn't fucking us all up already. Right? Aren't you? I am. So, whatever. But that's chat GPT. That's, that's its answer. It's telling you what it's going to do. You know, it's telling you. So, and we continue to buy into the bullshit, right? We continue to, 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 to give our tax dollars to these, to these fucking projects that continue to push us down our necks. It's, it's absolute insanity. Um. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, make sure to hit the like if you're in the chat too, guys. I hope people get to see this video. I hope they don't take it down, honestly. But if they do, it is what it is, right? And, uh, let's start. Let's go with the fast rundown here. We're going to start speeding it up so I can get to the, the good juicy shit before I have to end this one. Here we go. CDC updated the toxicological profile of vinyl chloride in January 2023 to justify cardiac issues of the poisonous substance. How about that? Another amazing coincidence, the CDC just updated the toxicological profile of vinyl chloride in January 2023. See the two versions below the major change found by one of the reader's newsletters and go to page 71 and page 42, the new safety. In 2006, at high concentrations, 30,000 parts per million vinyl chloride has been shown to sensitize the heart to epinephrine, resulting in cardiac arrhythmias in dogs. Right At high concentrations, 150,000 parts per million vinyl chloride was shown to sensitize the heart to epinephrine, resulting in cardiac arrhythmia in dogs. Right, So uh, basically now the version justifies cardiac issues uh, with a new added section. Cardiac sensitization was halogenated by hydrocarbons generally occurs at the very high air concentrations of 0.5 to 90% with the compounds were tested at anesthetic agents to experimental studies. Therefore, it appears unlikely that individuals exposed to low levels of vinyl chloride will experience these effects. It just shows you the fucking nonsense. And this is what kills me about people who blindly follow scientists and blindly follow the medical community and blindly follow politicians. Think for your motherfucking self, right? It's like just a little bit, please. Because it's like, um, it's to the point in... I just want to say this. I, 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 I'm, I've experienced a plethora of people in my lifetime. You know, I've got to meet so many people and travel so many cool places from doing this. I've been very blessed, right, uh, with the, the exposure to so many different people from so many different countries and so many different walks of life. And I never cease to amaze by the amount of people that people like you, the critical thinkers, the spiritual discerners, right, the people who ask questions, seek truth, um, the amount of people that you're surrounded by that believe that they're incapable of coming to their own conclusions and their own answers. It's like, oh, well, um, all doctors and nurses are indoctrinated by the medical system. All, all people in academia, teachers, right, they're indoctrinated as well. It's like all people in politics are indoctrinated and each form of this indoctrination comes with a standard set of answers, a standard set of um, operation for what we should do, what we should believe. And it's like we're, we're taught not to question, not to think for ourselves, not to look, not to seek, not to know. Right? And it's the most dangerous thing we could ever do is just accept what the status quo is and allow what's being presented to us as factual information to just be considered factual information just because they say it is. Right? It's like, why don't you do your own fucking research? Why don't you look into it your own self? Why don't you come to your own conclusions? And then we'll avoid things that happen like with C-19, where after the fact, all of the experts and the doctors that were silenced during all that pandemic shit that said that you shouldn't do it, right? And they lost their license and they lost their practices and all of that. They were silenced because they disagreed with the, the status quo, right? All those experts, we, we were told to ignore because they were far-right conspiracy theorists or they were this and that, right? But everybody who were science denier, deniers and you know demonized and all of this, right? were thrown and lumped into one pile as those people who just believe what they were told are now dead, 
most of them are suffering extreme health issues. And it's like, that's just one fucking example. One example of the misuse of our trust. The misuse of a fucking a million things, right? Here in the United States. Hey, Greta, why aren't you in Ohio right now? The climate clowns ignoring the cataclysmic Ohio environmental disaster show they only care about fucking money. And we already knew that, right? Greta Thunberg isn't doing the robot at some fucking weird festival in Germany. Then she's pushing her goofy climate book she probably didn't even write, right? Most of all, their absence clearly shows they don't give a damn about our planet Earth. You know, and we're going to show you some of how fucked up the climate is in Ohio now because of that. Does it really exist? Curiosity finds surprising new clues to Mars' watery past. Probably not. A lot of times we find that the footage that they show from Mars comes from fucking Arizona. Right? If you believe they go to space, then I got some, you know, some swamp land to sell you to. Amazing and terrifying scientists create 3D objects with sound. Scientists from the Max Planck Institute for Medical Research in the Heidelberg University created a new technology to assemble matter in 3D. This is weird. The concept uses multiple acoustic holograms to generate pressure fields with solid particles. Gel beads and even biological cells can be printed. These results pave the way for novel 3D cell culture techniques with applications in biomedical engineering. Say what? <laughs> they can literally create novel 3D cell culture techniques with applications in biomedical engineering with sound. They can make objects. Now imagine the many, many applications and the many ramifications that that will have on the population, right? Oh God. And it's uh. It's not like we have all of these frequencies pounding us from every fucking direction to make this possible, right? Oh, man. Red pill warning. While you're looking at the UFOs and balloons, Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist Seymour Hersh has accused Biden and the CIA of sabotaging the Nord Stream pipeline in explicit detail. Right here. How America took out the Nord Stream pipeline. Let me hook you up with that article link. I'm not going to read it now, but I am going to give it to you. So you can go read it yourself, right? Go read it yourself if you want to check this shit out. I'm not done. Hold on. Smoking on email from Ukraine's board of directors, Vadim Porharsky, uh, asked Hunter Biden and Devin Archer how Hunter can use his influence to get Victor Shogun fired. Joe is on tape admitting this. Hunter's laptop in FBI possession has that email on it from time. And here's that article, right? In case you're not sassified with, with the first article, here, let me give you another so you can look up on Biden's corruption and see that that fucktard is just the piece of shit that everybody says he is, right? And don't think Trump's any better. I'm sorry, I'm not on his team either. I play on no team. Epstein court documents have just been released, over 2,000 pages with a list of people on that island. Say what? Do you want to see who was on the island? I think I'm going to do an entire episode on this. So I'm not going to cover it tonight, but I'm going to give you the opportunity to go look at it yourself before we do do this video right now. And like I said, the live chat replay will be available. If you catch this on the flip side, just go to the chat box. These links will be there. Okay. This is the documents, the Epstein documents for all y'all to look at. And boom, a 50-car train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio, and the EPA control burned its Chernobyl, the eastern part of the U.S. Now fish and wildlife are turning up dead all over. The fallout is about 200 miles wide now and is going to spread through air and water. But look at the shiny balloon. Dogs having fun with a balloon. This is what you like. This is what you want. Cat videos. You want fucking cat videos and dogs bouncing balloons off your nose. The fuck is wrong with you, man? <laughs> the fuck? Seriously. Honestly. Oh, God. CDC. Suicide attempts, sexual violence, and ongoing feelings of sadness are increasing among teenage girls and boys, too. Actually. What? 30% of teen girls seriously considered suicide in 2021, 60% increase since 2011, 22% of LGBTQ 
teens attempted suicide in the same time period. 57% of girls said they felt persistently sad or hopeless. <laughs> wow. Um, and I mean, all of it's up. Ever reports to have sex, up 12%. Um, experience sexual violence, up 15%. Uh, persistent feelings of sadness, up 36%. Sincerely concerned of suicide, 19%. Um, made a suicide plan, 15%. Attempted suicide, up 10%. So remember how ChatGPT was talking about our mental health? Yeah, man. Just saying. Seriously, what the heck is happening lately? Wow. Lightning strikes Christ the Redeemer in Rio de Janeiro. And this is, I put this one in the thumbnail. This is a crazy ass pick, is it not? You know, this is like uh, Touchdown Jesus in Ohio, right? Major, major media cover up in Ohio. The 50 plus car derailment causes a huge amount of toxic chemicals to leak. The authorities began burning the chemicals to avoid an explosion. Now megatoxins are Chernobyl in Ohio. And I live in Cincinnati, guys. Just saying, I'm from Ohio. Take a look at these images, dude. How fucking crazy. How crazy. Look at that. Looks like a nuke went off, man. Looks like a nuke went off. And then, and the police is beating reporters and camera people and dragging them. This is how they do it. News Nation reporter arrested during East Palestine. This is craziness. Right? They don't want you knowing about this, right? You you cannot know that Ohio's fucked up now. <laughs> right? So Doing their jobs. Oh my god, I cannot believe this. <sighs> this is horrible. Uh. This is what it's like. Free speech. Right? Where but where is heading this thick and incredibly dangerous stream of smoke? Look at a wind map. They're heading to the eastern seaboard. Mass poisoning event in Pennsylvania. Wind headed towards New York City. Extremely toxic and carcinogenic vinyl chloride cloud, and that's why they had the update on the vinyl chloride, right? Where 30,000 parts per million would fuck you up, and now 150,000, yeah. it's nothing. These aren't, these aren't, these aren't storm clouds. This is the fucking shit that they burn off, the fucking shit they burn off. In East Palestine, this is not fucking storm clouds. Look at it. This is over Darlington. Look at that. This is their fucking success. How that ain't no fucking storm cloud. That's the fucking shit from East Palestine. They're fucking controlled burn.
right? Now we'll just do lower tone, richer tone. Solar storm coming. High chances of solar flare eruption today. NOAA issues warning. Forecasters predicted there's a high chance of another solar flare eruption today. It could release CME clouds and cause solar storms on Earth. <laughs> uh, you know, the sun's gonna fucking explode. The world's gonna explode. But is it really? Is that just to distract you from what they're actually doing down here on the ground? Yeah. The meteorite was found. The space rock from Fireball over Europe located in France. I showed you the video of that a little bit earlier, right? Officials updated on the meteorite. Um, heard by hundreds and it's like they're denying it hit the ground and all kinds of shit. Just craziness. An asteroid will just miss us in 2029. Scientists are making the most of a rare opportunity and I don't know if it will just miss us. I'm going to show you something right before we uh, tap out tonight. Um, a little something I discovered about a year or two ago. I did videos on it. I don't know if they're still up. If they are, they're called Apophis uh, 99942. It's the name of the video, I think. And I go in and I show you just how this is actually in the Bible. It's in Revelation 12. Uh, the story of the woman and the dragon. This goes back to... Uh, there was a great American eclipse, August 21st, 2017. Uh, this was predicted in prophecy, right? The judgment over Babylon or darkness at midday, right? And this has happened time and time again. These cycles repeat, guys. That's the Bible even tells you there's nothing new under the sun, okay? So it's dark at midday over the United States. This happens about a month before the rarest astrological event in history ever, Never happened before, never will happen again. Called the Great Sign. September 23rd, 2017. Right? And we've seen uh, Jupiter for in the gestation of 42 weeks or 9 months. Right? In the sign of Virgo. With uh, Leo, Mars, Venus, and Mercury in conjunction. The crown and 12 stars on her head. I've done these videos. You guys have seen this. You know all about the Great Sign. If you haven't, please watch my older videos. I've covered this at nauseum. For some of you guys, but it's been a while, right? And then there was this time period. It talks in the Bible about these signs that would happen. It talks about a time, time, and half a time, 1,260 days. Well, right on time, March 6th, 2021, asteroid Apophis 999 9 numerology means completion, the end, 42 the final 42 months of that seven year tribulation period so the time time and half a time three and a half years right where the mark of the beast because 999 is 666 inverted and then we've seen the COVID-19 um, uh, agenda roll out at that time as well right which COVID-19 in Hebrew Divac 91 right we've shown all of this Right, and if it's all a coincidence, I guess it's just the craziest coincidence ever in the history of coincidences. Right? It all happens. Right? And then it says another sign will appear. An enormous red dragon. Uh, dragon means, um, in Hebrew, a fabulous kind of serpent. Right? Apophis is derived from the Egyptian word apep or apepi, right? Which was described as a dragon or a serpent in Egyptian lore, right? It was the Lord and God of chaos and darkness. It went against uh, Mayat and truth, right? Like all of this, we've done all of this, right? Marking this, this point. And then uh, this next eclipse comes in 2024, which we will see popping up and, and boom, 2029. We know that uh, the next couple of years and then in 2029, Apophis will be passing. They said it was going to hit us years ago. And now they said it's not. To be clear, the asteroid is not going to hit us. There was a while there where it seemed like it could. See, like I said. Suffice to say, those were heady days in the asteroid tracking community. But as of March 2021, which I just mentioned, which took place after the Great Conjunction, which hadn't happened like that in over 800 years, which was another time of destruction, 
right? I showed you the biblical timeline of Exodus, Joshua's long day, all of this, and showing you how they coincided with cataclysmic points in Earth's history, right? And they all happened in these great conjunctions, December 20th, or 21st, 2020, right? Which was the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction. Very rare event, astrological event, coincides the end of these cycles. We have the end of the Piscean Age, end of this epoch, the procession of the equinoxes, enter the Aquarian Age, and the prophecies of Herculobos, Planet Nine, which is now being back in the news again, the emergence of, and let me show you, this large fucking increase in fireballs and asteroids, right? Let me show you. Let me show you. This is the increase in fireballs over the last couple of years. So every time you see one of these fireball videos and all of that, um, try to imagine that just a few years ago, nothing like this was happening. Not even fucking close, right? Uh, not even close. And now we're at the point to where they're blistering by at a fucking unprecedented rate, right? An unprecedented rate. Um, something that is never before seen. And hopefully this pops up quicker. Of course, it's on a delay. Uh, because I'm trying to show it to you. Uh, and everybody in the chat, make sure to hit that like. Hit the thumbs up. It helps with the algorithms. Subscribe. Comment. Right? Here we go. Here's the fireballs reported by the U.S. government censors from 88, 2023. All the fireballs. You can see it on the map. There's the data there. Now look at this. Let's see if we can get the bull eyes apart. I'm going to show you the numbers on this. This is going to blow your fucking mind. Right? And I never see anybody else ever show any of this. I showed it for years, and it's like I got to the point where I was tired of repeating myself. Tired of going through all of these prophecies and, like, breaking them down and um, kind of looking foolish. Right? When, when the end doesn't come, destruction doesn't come, people are like, oh, you're, you're doom and gloom, and, you know, you're negative, and this and that, and... You know, it's like, uh, you're a false prophet, right? It's like, I'm not saying I know when the end comes. No man does, right? But I was just saying that we are in that time. We're in that season. This was prophesied. This was, this is in the Bible. This is in the book of Revelation. And a lot of these Hebraic words and Bible verses and stuff were coded to kind of show us when it would happen. And here you go. 2017, 10. 2018, 30. 2019, this is when shit starts to get interesting. Remember, 2017 is the great sign. 432. 2020, 1343. 2021, 1427. 2022, 1435. Right? Do you see? This is the bull eyes. They call it a lightning mapper, but it's not, actually. This is detecting fireballs exploding in the fucking um, atmosphere, right? So you can see, this is those fireballs and their increase from 2017 to now. He went from 10 to 1,500 a year. You know? 10 to 1,500. So, <sighs> there was a while when this seemed like it could. Suffice to say, those were heady days in the asteroid tracking community. But as of March 2021, NASA confirmed there's absolutely zero chance a space rock known as Apophis 99942 will strike the planet for at least 100 years. So, phew, cross that particular doomsday scenario off the list. What does remain true, however, is that on Friday, Friday the 13th, 2029, 999, 42, 2 and 2 is 4, right? Asteroid 42, an asteroid wider than three football fields, will pass closer to Earth than anything its size has come in recorded history. An asteroid strike is a disaster. An asteroid flyby, an opportunity. An Apophis offers one of the best chances as ever to learn how the Earth came to be and how we might one day prevent its destruction. And let me just tell you too, Apophis was what they were using in the hypothetical impact scenarios um, for DART before they actually launched it in September of uh, last year or whatever, right? They were tracking Apophis. That's what they were using in their hypothetical impact scenarios. 
In the movies, incoming asteroids appear without warning from the depths of space and speed directly towards us until missiles or Bruce, Wiss, or Bruce Willis heroically destroys them. In real life, asteroids orbit the sun on elliptical paths. They are often spotted years, if not decades, before potential collision, which is not great for dramatic tension, but better for planetary survival. Apophis was discovered in 2004. After calculating its potential orbits, astronomers were startled to realize it had a 3% chance of hitting Earth in 2029. In a nod to its horrifying potential, they named it Apophis, the Egyptian god of chaos and darkness. We were shocked, says Paul Shotis, who manages NASA's NEO program at Jet Propulsion's laboratory in La Canada, Frintage. This is very serious and actually a very unexpected and rare event. Astronomers use a color-coded warning system called the Torino scale to gauge the degree of danger an asteroid or comet presents to the Earth in the next 100 years. In the scale's creation in 95, none of the roughly 30,000 NEOs known to exist in the system had ranked higher than 1 on the 0 to 10 scale. Apophis was a 4. 999-42. The longer astronomers track an asteroid, the more clearly defined it becomes. And just to say, 42, two fours is 8, 88, we were seeing that, and 14, and all that, just pointing that out. 4 plus 2 is 6, also. So, the astronomers uh, track an asteroid, the more clearly defined its orbit becomes. Within a few moments, or months, scientists were able to rule out the possibility of the 2029 strike. Within a few years, they were able to dismiss the smaller chance of a hit in 2036. Here's the images. In 2021, radar observations confirmed that Apophis will not strike when it passes in 2068, leaving the Earth in the clear for at least a century. With humanity's safety assured from this threat, at least, the coast was clear to geek out on some asteroid science. We've never seen something that large get that close. Close in the space world is a relative term. At its nearest, Apophis will pass roughly 19,000 miles above the Earth's surface. That's about one-tenth the distance to the moon. No one on the ground will be tempted to duck and will not appear as a fireball swooshing across the heavens. On the big night, Apophis will be visible with the naked eye from parts of Europe and Africa. In LA, experienced stargazers might be able to spot it with binoculars around 3.30 a.m. Right, the witching hours, 3 a.m., 33, on April 13th, the astro 413. The asteroid's close encounter presents unprecedented opportunity to study its physical properties and help us learn that we've never been able to learn before. And you can see an approach this close from an asteroid this big occurs in almost every few thousand years. And this is the animation of the 2029 approach, by the way. Of Apophis. And I feel like what they're not telling you is that the magnetic field of the earth can pull this thing in. Like anything can happen, right? Debris can come off. You know, why would they launch a double asteroid redirection test after all of this? It's just crazy. You know, it's crazy. So you can take this with a grain of salt. Um, you can believe this, you can do what you want with this, but I think it's interesting. And whenever we look at, you know, the, the prophecies and, and all of this, you know, um, a lot of people will connect this to Planet X, Planet 9. And a lot of people connect a lot of the destructions from the past to an asteroid that passed incredibly close or a comet that passed incredibly close. A lot of these coincided with cycles ending like we see now. Sun cycles ending like we see now, right? Solar cycles, um, large cosmic cycles like we see now, right? And it's like with everything kind of culminating in this, um, this moment in humanity where we're like at a breaking point. It's like, um, are we moving to the future and towards an expansion, a growth, and evolution, and adaptation to the changes that are coming at our species? And are we going to evolve and outgrow and surpass every challenge we're faced with together? Right? Or are we going to wither up and die and crumble under the pressure? You know? Every time these cycles end, economic collapse, political upheaval, and even global cataclysmic and catastrophic changes. And I haven't even factored into you, keep in mind, the South Atlantic anomaly, 
right? The migration of the magnetic poles, right? The dissipation of the magnetic field, the ozone layer, the stopping of the core, the tilting of the earth, all the changes within the solar system as well as within our sun itself. I haven't even told you about none of that in this video. But yet at the same time, right, we're, we're focused on Hunter Biden's laptop, you know, and Trump's little hands. It's like, what the fuck is wrong with us? You know, what happened to us along the way? And do we deserve to get into the next stage, the next epoch? I hope so. I hope the Aquarian age is one where we unite consciously. Right? We stop allowing these divide and conquer tactics to destroy us from within. We stop allowing political bullshit, religious dogma and indoctrination and, you know, our sexual orientation and our, our race or age and all of these things to, to divide us and keep us apart. But we can have a vision uh, of one where uh, planet Earth uh, is no longer oppressed by governments and corporations, but it's, you know, people that empower the, the planet. And we're not worried about having too many people, right? Because we know there's more than enough for all of us. You know, and we focus on educating ourselves and uh, maturing as a species, both spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, and stop being the immature children that we've been in God's backyard for however long. Every time we've been reset, I think we've probably deserved it. Technology has surpassed our spiritual uh, awareness and destruction comes. Hopefully this time we learn the lesson. And those that are planning to cull and depopulate us are the ones that need to go. Those are the useless eaters. Not the ones who actually make the world go round by doing the everyday tasks that actually make the world go round. So, I want to thank all of you guys for joining me. I hope you enjoyed tonight's video. Um, keep in mind, we're completely viewer powered. So, um, it's your donations. It's your support that helps me to do what I love to do that makes this channel go. It, it helps me and my family. Um, so, uh, donate, support, PayPal, Venmo, Patreon, Cash App, Facebook Messenger Pay, uh, Facebook, YouTube subscriptions. You can even book your own personal tarot reading. They're 50 bucks. Email me, the real best damn podcast at gmail.com. Or you can just donate and give to the channel. It helps me so much. Um, also, share this. Share it on your Facebook groups, your, you know, your, all your, your little social medias. Follow me on the social medias as well. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, and hit that like, hit the thumbs up. It helps with the algorithms and comment. I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions on the things that we discussed tonight. Guys, I appreciate you so much, and I can't tell you how much I love all of you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, Jam Low, Janine Burnett, Kimberly F., Claret Knight, Sharon Kane, uh, Ralph Russell, Stool Perger, Jedi Skywalker, Nomix. Um, Melopolis Britannica. <laughs> nice. Nice. I love your guys' names, by the way. Um, Mr. Bone Dangles. And these are some, some good ones right here, guys. This is like, this is, we're, we're trying to be a family here. Zero Infinity. You know, the best damn fam, as a matter of fact. Um, John Madera, Tim Hamby. I appreciate you guys and just everything you do. All right, man. Uh, remember, Jesus is the truth, the way, and life. God bless you all. I love you, and I will see you next time. You all have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Peace.